Hey guys, I am Daisho and I am here playing some Magic, and today I am bringing you the games from the last draft that I was in, and this draft was pretty good. I, I like the deck that I built, and my opponent's deck is pretty decent, you guys will see some really, really good cards that he's got in here, but anyway, he leads off with a Hinterland Hermit, it's a 2-1, and on the flip side, it'll be a 3-2 that has to be blocked, so um, it's really cool that I get the Silver Chase Fox there, otherwise he would have flipped to the other side, and then been swinging in for 3 um, I decided to block here. I figure that um, it would be advantageous for me. And then he lays a land and plays a wake dancer. Therefore, um, if I hadn't blocked, I would have been in a much better position because he basically still has four power on the board as if he had just played a three mana 2-2 two -two, um, and and not even lost his dude. Uh, but now, now he just gets the dude anyway and I lose my dude. So really, really bad for me. I decide not to play anything on my turn and obviously that means that I'm going to take some damage this turn, take, take four damage. Um, a fifth of my life total and he luckily for me he doesn't have a play so then I just lay my land and lay my dude play a galvanic juggernaut and galvanic juggernaut is a really really good card it is a 5-5 five five for 4 mana and it attacks each turn of able um, the downside is that it only untaps when a creature dies but usually what happens is it swings in and then somebody blocks it if they don't want to take 5 damage and then it, it just untaps right away. So it's usually it's usually really, really good. And uh, I, I remember getting it pretty late in the draft and is usually a much higher pick than that. But anyway, I got it pretty late, so I was happy about that. But uh, And I get it out here, and I'm thinking, all right, this is pretty decent. I can wall his side off. What I didn't really take into account is really the extent of the removal he has in his deck. At this point, I figure he probably has a play. But um, if I don't block with my Galvanic Juggernaut, I'll go down. Oh, no, I do. Oh, yeah, I, I, I decided to block. Okay, sorry. I was like, what? Did I make a mistake? No, but I was right. Um, anyway, I block, and he Brimstone Volleys my dude. And, um, I mean, that was it was inevitable. It was going to happen eventually. My dude was a 5-5 five -five anyway, so... Um, he would he would be able to die if my opponent used a Morbid Brimstone Volley. So, um... Yeah, anyway, I, I use Burden of Guilt on his zombie token because I don't have a creature out right now, and that's really the only way that I have to uh, stop it. So at his upkeep, I tap it. I usually like to tap things at upkeep with... Um, sorry about that. I usually like to tap things at upkeep with Burden of Guilt, but uh, just just so that I don't forget because sometimes I find myself forgetting, and then that's just really bad. Anyway, he hits land drop 5, which uh, <laughs> later in the second game you'll see is pretty significant. But anyway, I get my Battleground Geist out there, and I'm pretty happy about that, but um, I, he, his guy taps, but he doesn't even bother because I have the mana open to uh, tap it down and upkeep. So I have the I obviously have six lands out there. I, you guys are probably really, really happy um, for him that he has all his land nice and, and tapped and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> he plays out Olivia Voldaren. And uh, if you don't know what Olivia does and if you don't feel like rewinding, basically her um, she's a 3-3 three, three flyer for four. Um, two, a red and a black, that's her mana cost, and then she has two abilities. The first ability is one and a red, deal one damage to target creature, put a plus one plus one counter on Olivia, and um, in addition to that ability, she also makes that creature a vampire. Then her secondary ability is tap three and two black, and target vampire, I mean, yeah, gain control of target vampire. So basically, she just hits somebody one turn, then the next turn she takes them. If you've got a bunch of mana out, she can hit and take in one turn. So basically, Olivia is pretty much the game, it wins the game. If if you can't do anything to deal with her, then it's just over. Luckily, I, I do have the claustrophobia, so I can prevent her from swinging in with her awesome flyer. But now is where the Burden of Guilt, or or using the Burden of Guilt on the zombie token, really, really comes back to haunt me. Because he plays out at Charmbreaker Devils, and um, right here, I'm just like, uh-oh. <laughs> I swing in for three here, because I know that at his upkeep, he's going to go grab his Brimstone Volley back, because Charmbreaker Devils lets you return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard at random. So, um, I'm going to be a little bit sad town. Go into sad town. Tap his zombie, like a boss. And uh, he's obviously he's got the brimstone volley in hand, and my uh, my battleground geist is a four is is only a three three, so it can die even without the morbid ability. So even though it's fourteen fourteen, and we both have like one creature on the board because his are are a little bit uh, different. So anyway, he declares attack, and I know that um. I know that if I don't do anything, then he's going to hit me, probably either hit my, I don't know if he would hit my face or hit my Geist, 
And but if he hits my face with his brimstone volley, then that would deal three to me plus, and then his uh, Charm Breaker Devils will get plus four plus oh. So <laughs> he would be swinging for eleven, taking me down to three. So I use my Feeling of Dread, which is unfortunate because Feeling of Dread is such a good card. If I had, if you have a decent board presence. Um, then you can really just win the game in two or three turns if you've got Feeling of Dread out. So um, it's it's actually one of my favorite cards, to be honest. It's one of my favorite cards in the set, and I think it's it's one of the best cards in Innistrad. Um, like, I mean, I was just thinking about it. If I ever, even even not in a blue-white deck, if I ever am running white, I would I would run Feeling of Dread, and if I can get some sort of splash thing, if I can get a Traveler's Amulet or an Evolving Wilds or Shimmering Grotto, I would splash for it. I think it's really, it's just that good. Um... But anyway, it's it's not looking too great for me here. I don't I don't remember if I do or um, or do not flashback my feeling of dread. I don't really think that it's worth it here at this point. I'm only holding two cards in hand, and he's got Charm Breaker Devils out, which is like, and I I really have no way of just getting it gone. Like I can't kill it in any way. Um, I don't have rebuke or anything like that so he swings in here and i say sure whatever and then he's obviously going to use his brimstone volley at my face um dealing me three damage and uh then charm breaker devils would be eight damage i'll see you at three and then probably what will happen here is i'll untap look at another card realize i can't win and then scoop it up and now we're moving on to game two there's been a lot of sideboarding in my deck i took out i think four or five cards um there was another one that I wanted to put in. I think it was Divination. I wanted to try to get in here, but I couldn't find a spot for it. There's, I mean, I just have a lot of good cards in this deck. And um, he leads off with an Isolated Chapel, which, by the way, is an awesome card. If he's, I think he's running on Burial Rites, so he wants the um, the white splash in there. And he just happened to get an Isolated Chapel, which is like $9 in real life. But anyway, I play a Drog School Captain out here, turn 3, and I'm feeling all right about that. I mean, he's a pretty good creature. 2-2 two, two flyer gives all my other spirits hexproof. Um, even if I don't have any spirits, he's still a 2-2 two, two flyer. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I think one of the main things that I was actually missing from this deck was a Midnight Haunting or a Lingering Souls or something like that just to make some some flying tokens. Um, he Again, he starts out with the Hinterland Hermit. This time it's turn 3, though. He probably just drew it. Um, anyway, I play, I play uh, Slayer of the Wicked just to get rid of his... Uh, his hinterland hermit, and now I'm looking pretty happy. But uh, and then the second I do that, he tragic slips my drag skill captain, and again the board position is not looking like for for just a second. I had a two two out, I had a three two out, and he had nothing. And I was like, wow, this could actually really work because that's the reason why I use Slayer there. I figured um, it would be really really beneficial for me to just get him in there, and it would be pretty cool. But uh, did not really work out, and then he plays the walking corpse, and all of a sudden my Slayer of the Wicked can't really do anything. I try, I decide to swing in. Hopefully, I mean it would be nice if I could have gotten in there, but um, I wasn't really expecting to, and I knew that his deck is just full of removal, so um, I didn't think that he would stay out there for too long. But here's where I make the biggest mistake of the game. He plays the near near Earth Stalker, and I basically just say okay, and then it was just like. I was, I think I was a little upset, and I was playing, like, really, really quickly, because I was not doing well at all, and I just said, okay, and then I was like, uh, because I don't think I really should have said okay there, um, I should have used my counterspell, I have a loss in the miss, I should have countered his near, his stalker, um, because the cards that I have in my hand that can deal with, with his creatures are a smite the monstrous and a lost in the mist, so now he's going to play his Night Revelers, and I'm going to um, get rid of them. But I would basically, ha oh my god, I would have been in such better position if I had used Lost in the Mist on his near his Stalkers, um, then, uh, then, because it has Undying, so my Smite the Monstrous really doesn't do much against it. Uh, I, I need to kill it first and then smite it, so... <laughs> Um, that was really bad, and then he plays the Neary Stalker and passes, and so I really, I mean, I could have been at 20, um, he would have played the Night Revelers, and I probably would have smote it monstrously, but, you know, I mean, everybody makes mistakes, that really just wasn't the greatest idea there, take another four from his, uh, his, his Stalker, and luckily for me, he's stuck at five lands, I'm pretty sure he's holding a Charm Breaker Devils in hand, and, um, He's just going to play a Crosswave Vampire here. Oh, no, Hammer Watchkeep, which is just terrible for me because I, I really don't have um, 
I don't really have any spells to play, so <laughs> the hand mirror watch keep is just going to flip, and then that's another 5-5 five five that I have to deal with, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, sorry about the, the mic thing anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the smite the monsters on him, I, I kind of have to, I don't really have much of a choice here, but um, I'll, I'll just take him out with a smite the monstrous and then take another four from this near he stalker that um, really wouldn't have dealt with it so you might be saying well what would you have done once you played the hand or watch keep um, if you had done it the other way and he plays charm breaker devils and I've got the bone dash in hand um, so when he played the when he played the the uh, the hand where watch keep I could have I could have used my bone dash because by then I would have had the second counter spell um, I would have realized or I could have just left it alone um, when I drew from the bone dash I drew into a claustrophobia so I'm thinking all right the board is pretty much stalled uh, I don't know how many cards he has in hand but I don't think it's that many more than me um, he's been playing spells pretty much every turn except for a couple of them and he plays his crossway vampire again um, is it again I feel like I bounced it I don't remember how I bounced it no, it must, must have been there the whole time. I don't remember. So, Oh, no, he didn't play yet. Wow. Sorry about that, guys. He plays his crossway vampire. I play my deranged assistant um, pretty much just as a blocker. And on end step, he tragic slips his own near East stalker. Gets rid of my um, claustrophobia. So I could have <clears throat> I could have used the claustrophobia on the hand or watch keep. I could have um, I could have used it on the charm breaker devils, though. That, that would not really have helped too much. Um, even if I hadn't used Bone Dash on that. I, I don't know, maybe I, I, if I was at 20 life, I probably would not have used Bone Dash on the Handmere Watch Keep. I would have figured that I would draw a way to deal with it. And right now, it's really not looking good. He's got, um, five, eight, ten, he's got ten power on the board, and I'm at five life. Um, but I, I, luckily, I think I had, or I drew into a Silent Departure, so I make him pick up the biggest one. And then I'm gonna tap another five to get rid of the crossway vampire it's looking pretty futile for me right here but i figured that i may as well just try um, and draw one more card and see if it does anything for me i don't really think that the card in my hand right now is too significant he swings in for two and then he's gonna end up winning the game here he's got the stronger captain and his crossway vampire and by then i really know that it's pretty much over but i may as well just look at the last card in my deck so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that game and congratulations to my opponent for winning. That was a really cool game, and he had an amazing deck. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Have a nice day. Bye.